So now we are going to talk about the genetic drift part. And what is genetic drift? How exactly genetic drift can alter the allele frequency? How exactly it can alter the allele frequency? We are going to see. So genetic drift, where the genetic changes is done by chance. Genetic changes done by chance in a population. And uh, we call genetic drift uh, resulted as a result of sampling error. Now, what is mean? What is meant by sampling error? Misrepresentation and small populations are uh, prone to genetic drift. Larger population or population of large individuals are not prone to genetic drift. Genetic drift occurs in small discrete populations. So this is an example of how genetic drift is done, where you can see here a uh, population of beetles where the green, uh, red and yellow beetles are almost 50-50 in the population here, okay, it's 50-50. So, at this point, the frequency for R, capital R for red, small r for yellow. So, capital R, how many red are there? 8 red. How many yellow are there? 8 yellow. So, 8 red, 8 yellow, total 16 beetles. What happened is, so the ratio, what is the frequency? 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So at this point, what we have, the frequency of P and Q, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, total of 1, right? Now, after some time, let's say there is a random event. This beetle population is very small, only 16 beetles. And they are walking in a, uh, in a path. And somehow, people walk and some of the beetles are dead. Because of the population is so small, only 16. And let's imagine some of the beetles are dead. And which beetles are dead more? Red, uh, dead more. So after the population of red became 2 and how many yellow survived? 6. So now <clears throat> total 8 survived, 50% of the population is dead, total 8 survived, among the 8, two, uh, 2 red and 6 yellow. So what we get at the end, the frequency of red now is 2 out of 8, that is 0 0.5, 0 0.25 and 6 out of 8 is yellow, 0 0.75. So at this moment, what is the frequency of red? 0 0.25, frequency of Yellow point seven five total is one, but again, if we consider this is for the dominant allele and this is for the recessive allele, then what we can see that the dominant allele or red allele's frequency dropped from point five to point two five, and uh, the recessive allele's frequency increased from point five to point seven five. So this is a change in the allele frequency. Although addition of that gives rise to 1, that's normal, fine. But there is a change in allele frequency. How we get to 1 was 0 0.5, 0 0.5 earlier, now 0 0.25, 0 0.75. So this change in allele frequency can state that yes, there is change in allele frequency. And this is genetic drift. So genetic drift can alter the allele frequency. This is an example of how genetic drift can alter the allele frequency. So genetic drift is known as the random sampling by chance. Genetic drift is known as the random sampling by chance. So, in this case, another example, a bottle filled with uh, marble with uh, red and blue balls, for example. And what we need to, we can draw randomly, whether we can draw either red ball or a blue ball. So, you can see that uh, randomly, we draw some balls and that the ball that we draw uh, is something, some of the others, like very few, red. And rest of them are blue. So, through the random sampling process, that if you put the hands and bring some of the balls randomly, you can get all the blue sometimes, all the red sometimes, or mixed of red and blue. So, that gives rise to a change in, the, in that uh, particular chamber. So, that can alter the number of red and blue balls in that chamber. This is just an example of how random sampling can be done. That's called random sampling. From a population, randomly you select some of the individuals and transfer it somewhere. The random sampling can lead to the change in allele frequency. And there are some uh, real life examples of this random sampling, which we'll see in a moment. But remember one thing in the genetic drift, the most important uh, factor is the population size. Population size. The population size to begin with, the number of n. n. Remember, n is the number of individuals the population started with. If the n is high, let's say 1000 individuals are present then chance of random error to alter that frequency is very low. Why? Because if 1000 individuals are there, let's imagine you sample 5 individuals. What is the probability that the 5 individuals is going to change the frequency of the rest of the 995? It's not going to be much, 
right? But if the population is starting with 10 individuals, you change, you take 5. So 50% of the population can alter the allele frequency more often, right? So if the population size is small, it has more uh, chance to show the change in allele frequency. So either the allele frequency in all it was 0.5. If the size is 10 only, then this 0.5 allele frequency can increase up to 1 maximum or it can decrease up to 0 minimum, right? Because it's a possibility. Let's imagine there are two colored beetles, yellow and red. There's a possibility that all red are dead and only you have survived. So the frequency of red will be 0. And if all yellow survive, the frequency for yellow will become 100%, right? But if the population size is big enough, 1,000, 20,000, 80,000, the more you increase, the chance of random sampling error to take an effect in changing allele frequency in that population is low, right? Here you see the example of uh, the genetic drift. One example is bottleneck effect. What is bottleneck effect? A population is squeezed through the bottleneck. So what is a bottleneck? It is a bottle and this is neck. Neck is smaller in the diameter and the rest of the structures are bigger in diameter, right? So bottleneck is a structure where uh, a population is squeezed. We, we say that population is squeezed through the bottleneck. So squeezing through the bottleneck means in this case also you will see two colors, red and blue. And you see when they are squeezed through the bottleneck means the chance that how many number of individuals survive in that area is very low, right? So as this bottleneck is small in diameter, only one or two can uh, pass here in this case. So let's say only red can pass, only blue can pass. So let's say only red can pass for, in this case, red is passing through this bottleneck. So at the end, the population, we see more red than blue. Earlier it was blue and red almost 50-50, but now, Red more, blue less. Change in allele frequency, that's an example of genetic drift. So bottleneck effect is an example of genetic drift. What happens when the population is big enough and there is some sort of event in time and with, after that event what happens, there is a decline in the population size due to some reason, due to maybe some, some natural calamities or some sort of activities, uh, environmental activities or man-made activities. Some animal population may be reduced down to that effect. Seals, northern elephant seal are one example where the bottleneck effect was observed. Northern elephant seal, there was huge number of northern elephant seal and then people started hunting. So as people started hunting northern elephant seal, uh, the, they reduced down to only few hundred. From thousands and thousands of number in population, they reduced down to only few hundred. And so from few hundred, again, once people understood that, uh, that uh, keeping them alive is important for uh, the earth and the atmosphere, then people start, stop uh, killing the, uh, the seals and also they start protecting them. So sooner you see a recovery afterwards. So that's called the bottleneck effect where the population size is big enough, then it is squeezed through a bottleneck, then again there is a recovery. So this is recovery, this is normal population size. And this is the bottleneck effect that we have done. So bottleneck is the time where the number of individuals survive for that population is very low. So from 60,000 seals, for example, it became to only 80. So now the population size of the northern elephant seal became 80. So the population size becomes small. So at that moment, genetic drift can act. So genetic drift acted. And those in seals who survived, those 80, they are the ancestor of all the thousands of different seals that we see nowadays. So whatever genotype they carry, they are going to spread that only. Right? So obviously, the allele frequency if you measure here and then we measure now will be different. Right? There will be change. So we can say the northern NFL seal received some new features or some existing features are gone. So we can say this population evolved because it's under the pressure under and it's moving through the bottleneck effect. So that's one example of the genetic drift, bottleneck effect. And another example is founder effect. Genetic drift, second example, founder effect. This is even easier to understand. Let's imagine that in this island, there are red and yellow beetles in the big island. 
and uh, in this island they become very difficult to survive because of the food because of the huge population size so what they decided some of them uh, start to move to a neighboring island okay so as they move to near island only few start movement two or three and all of them are red so in the new island who started colonizing only red right so at the new island we have only red so there is also change in allele frequency right so similarly let's imagine a hypothetical condition in future times if let's say in earth as the population is increasing human population we decided to colonize on mars and we found out everything to colonize there everything is done so some people will start the journey from here to go there and start colonization so the people will start the process the initial individuals initial uh, offsprings that they grow at that area will be descendant from them so any genotype that they favor they had is going to start in there right so if you measure the overall allele frequency in our population and in that population there will be huge difference between the two because that will be an example of founder effect okay founder effect means why because some of the individuals are founding a new population somewhere else right so that also alters the genetic frequency that is founder effect so in all these cases we see that ultimately uh, yet they are altering the allele frequencies they are altering the allele frequency because allele frequency at the early stage was something but it's been modified later on